Always still spray don't on the stop sign. Born us and they told us always been in the top crime. In our hell lives, the rise is a rock climb. Hi guys, my name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA. And today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course. So now we're going to talk about SI units. So SI units stands for International System of Units, and it was created in, at around 1960 to replace the metric system. I mean, the metric system originates from the 1790s, so it's from way back. But the basic concept of SI units is that the result of a measurement is equal to the number times the unit. What that means is, for example, when we talk about mass, this is a measure of the quantity of matter that it contains, so the amount of the matter that it contains. But when we talk about weight, that's actually not an SI unit, and the reason for that is because the weight of an object is a measure of the gravitational pull that it experiences. So people often confuse these two things together, but it's completely different. So to give an example, an astronaut has the same mass or contains the same amount of matter on Earth as he is on Mars, but his or her weight would be less on Mars because Mars has a lower gravitational pull. So when we talk about SI units, we actually talk in multiples of powers of 10 as the SI base unit. So SI base unit is in powers of 10. So now I'm going to introduce three of the big SI units that you're going to use in this course. And we're going to talk about mass which is in kilograms, and we're going to talk about length, which is in meters, and also time, which is in seconds. And so when I previously talked about the base unit being in powers of 10, what that means is if I want to talk about one centimeter, which is a length, I would write that out as 10 to the power of negative 2 meters, as powers of 10. Now we'll, now we'll talk about prefixes that are used for SI units. So these are the prefixes for SI units, and as I mentioned before, we use multiples of the powers of 10 as the SI base unit. And so there's tera, which is 10 to the power of 12, that's a huge number, giga, which is 10 to the power of 9, mega, 10 to the power of 6, and you may be familiar with hearing this if you use electronics. When we talk about memory sticks, there's megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, etc. Um, kilo is 10 to the power of 3, like when you talk about kilograms as a mass. Deci is now 10 to the power of negative 1, meaning it's a tenth. Centi is a hundredth. Milli is a thousandth. For example, if you talk about a millimeter, it's a thousandth of a meter. And then we go into the very small values, 10 to the power of negative 6, 9, and 12, which are micro, nano, and pico. So now I want to talk about unit conversions. And for you guys to be familiar with inches and pounds, you need to know the conversion for that. So one inch is 2.54 centimeters. And 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. So if you're really familiar with using these two units, now you know how to convert it. So the basis for unit conversions is to use the information that's required equals what's given to you multiplied by the units required over the units given. So this might be a little hard to currently understand and so let me give you an example. So a question says, convert 256 centimeters squared into square meters. So how would we go about doing this? So what we want to get is the area in meters squared. 
which is the info required. What is given to us? 256 centimeter squared. The units required is a meter, right? And so we put a meter at the top, and what's given to us? Centimeters. And so basically there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so we use this part to convert the units. And we have to do squared right here because it's meter squared and centimeter squared. And when you end up canceling the units, centimeter squared and centimeter squared, you'll end up with meter squared. So the answer to this problem is 2.56 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters squared. Let's try another problem right here. Okay, so the question is convert 1.5 kilometers per second, so that's a velocity or a speed at which something's traveling, into kilometers per hour. So when you first look at this, you might think that it's complicated because now we're looking at time, but it's actually really simple. So what do we want? We want to find the speed in kilometers per hour. What's given to us? 1.5 kilometers per second. So now what do we multiply this with? There's 3,600 seconds in an hour, right? So we put an hour at the top and 3,600 seconds at the bottom. And what do we end up with? 1.5 kil kilometers per second times 3,600 seconds per hour. The units cancel out. 5.4 times 10 to the power of 3 kilometers per hour. So it's really simple math, and you just have to get used to canceling out the units. Um, it's sometimes a little more complicated when it's a fraction like this, but just do a lot of problems yourself and they should get easier. Next thing I want to talk about is SI derived units. So the two that you need to know for this course is volume, which is in meters cubed. And this is called an extensive property. What that means is that it depends on size. So for example, if you have a box, in order to find the volume of the box, we know the length, the width, and the height. And it's going to end up being m times n times m, m cubed. The second one you need to know is density. Now the unit of density is kilograms per meter cubed. Now this is called an intensive property. What this means is that it does not depend on size. So these are the two that you need to know. So furthermore, another thing that you need to be familiar with is temperature scales. So I'm going to mention three different scales that we use. So the first one is Fahrenheit. So water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit freeze and boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is mostly used in the USA, but we don't really use it when we talk about chemistry. When we talk about chemistry, we often use Celsius and Kelvin. So the second one, Celsius, is an important one where you guys should all know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And this is used for measuring temperatures. Um, if you want to know a conversion, Fahrenheit is 1.8 times Celsius 
plus 32. But we hardly ever use this equation. What is very important though is the Kelvin scale. And in this case, water freezes at 273.15 Kelvin and boils at 373.15 Kelvin. In the future of 14a and 14b, you'll be using the Kelvin scale a lot. And this is used in calculations a lot and zero Kelvin is also called absolute zero. So I'm going to write that here. Zero Kelvin is also known as absolute zero. And the conversion from degrees Celsius to Kelvin is Kelvin is degrees Celsius plus 273.15. Really straightforward. Link. A chance to dance on a four fat lady sink. Murderous servant, hoping one day I may be king. Try and get fly to swap play the